Welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. In today's video, I want to share with you a business finance tracker that you can use, especially if you have a small business and you want to track your invoices and your payments and understand your cash flow and your balance and all of that good stuff. So if you're new to this channel, I'm posting content on Excel and Google Sheets um, all the time. So if you like that kind of thing, please subscribe and don't miss a new video. So the Google Sheets file has a few sheets. There's the balance sheet. There's the balance sheet. Okay. Where you can see the starting balance for a certain date and how the money flows month by month. There's the cash flow um, sheet where basically it's a pivot table where you can see more of a detailed look on all the different streams. Past due is a report that shows you all of the invoices or payments that are past due and you need to pay them. Transaction log is the main sheet where you input all the different um, transactions that you have. Payment terms where you define the payment term for your customers or your vendors. And activity list where you define basically the activity and activity type. Let's start from here, the activity list. So I've set up three, income, expense, and cost. Gave them a plus or minus sign for the pivot table to summarize properly. And define the cash flow order. We'll see later on. That's going to help us sort the pivot table according to this order. So we have a column for activity and the column for activity type. We're going to use that for building uh, dependent drop-down lists. So you can just add more on the bottom. It doesn't have to be uh, sorted or anything like that. The date of today, that's just a formula that I use referencing instead of using the date, the formula in every, every cell. And here is where it's building a dynamic drop-down list using um, these couple of functions basically filtering the uh, the list based on the activity then transposing and of course using unique just so just to be on the safe side to make sure that uh, there isn't uh, double uh, values and this is referencing the transaction log over here so whenever you select an activity um, It will create the dependent uh, drop-down list, and then you'll see how that how we do that later. But this is the first step. That's something that you need to set up once, and then you're good to go. Payment terms: you need to list the customers or your vendors, and the payment term, and you can all even assign a default value. Uh, I put here 15 days. That's just if the certain customer doesn't appear or something, just to be on the safe side. The transaction log itself, what are the columns that we have? Transaction ID, date, the name of the customer vendor. Here I'm using a drop down list referencing this. If you're not familiar how to create drop down lists, go to data, data validation. See, I already have a few here. The first one I wanted this to be a date, so I made this as a date between 23 and the end of the year. You don't have to do that, of course. Um, and here you see I just selected the range, selected it's always on the drop down, so you need to select the drop down. And then I'm just referencing uh, the payment terms. And you see I'm leaving the last digit out, so that makes it endless and basically. If you add more rows, it will just be added on. So that's how to create a drop down list. Also, the same here for activity. And then the dynamic um, is built this way. 
So it's referencing basically the activity list um, from here till the end of the, the same row. Probably going to have a detailed video just on that, how to create it, because it's kind of cool. But suffice to say that it works, and if you change to uh, income, then it has the income values. If you change to expense, it has the expense types. If you change to cost, it shows you the costs. description if you want to add some more information like this is your uh, mobile line and this is uh, packaging so this could be a lot of things the amount of course in this case I've built it on US dollars then you have a checkbox if it's received or paid checks box is also very easy to add data um, or sorry insert checkbox Okay, it's default and just creates that true false to that area and you just flag it if it's paid or not and we're going to use that later on uh, any comment that you want to add and here the orange columns are columns that are formulas so this is the PL PNL order I'm sorry it should be cash flow actually cash flow order is more correct um, so this is where you defined the cash flow order. Simple view lookup. Pass due, it's checking if the due date. What's the due date? That's the payment terms plus the date. Payment terms, that's the uh, the uh, view lookup here or the default if that doesn't exist. And pass due is just checking if the date over here is um, is, is, is after uh, today plus it's uh, H2 is false meaning you didn't we didn't pay yet, yet. so that's going to be a yes all right so that's why you see yeah I thought it was supposed to be opposite fix okay so yeah you see uh, oh, I'm sorry it's the opposite right this was okay so uh, it was supposed to be paid on February 14th, still haven't paid, so it's past due. Sorry about that. If you check, then it gives us the no. So that's the transaction log, pretty simple, not a lot to explain. The past due report, that is just <coughs> for the, for the uh, row. I'm just using transpose, transpose for the transaction log, so I have the same headers. And then I'm just using a filter function based on column K, which is the due date, uh, past due column. So just checking for the rows that are yes. So that's all that is. It just, it's just an information um, sheet where you can just see which rows are past due and just handle them. Cash flow. So this is a pivot table. Just create a simple pivot table and then we use um, the first row which is the cash flow order and I just slightly hit that because it's just numbers but that gave me the the order because unfortunately unlike Excel can't move the uh, the orders of the pivot table so I had to do it this way and so we have the uh, cash flow order activity and the activity type. Then we have the due date over here in the columns and it's grouped. So you see I grouped it by year month. If I didn't group it, it just gave me the 
so I grouped it um, and I have the amount here with the sign meaning a plus or a minus and this is here's where here's where you see why it's it's nice to use that because you can get the uh, pivot table to actually give you a sum an accurate sum per month with the plus and the negative um, I've also added a filter here on the bottom that the date is not empty because the pivot table is on the entire uh, sheet and you can also have a slicer here to show you just for example the transactions that are already paid or, or received payment or this would show you the ones that are still open or you can just use both and just an example of what you could do if you don't know how to create the slicer very simple click on the pivot table somewhere click on data add slicer and just select whatever you want like description then you can just select so that's, that's very simple the last sheet over that we have here is the balance sheet the balance sheet you need to change these two cells the start date and the starting balance and it will show you the income for that period the expense the cost and the closing balance which is all four and then the opening balance is the previous balance closing and it goes on and on so the starting balance is a formula if I put here a different number everything will change <coughs> and then I just have some ifs some ifs for column L which is the amount and then I am referencing column D which is the activity okay and then column N which is the due date um, okay and just looking for due date that's greater than the date I have here, which is the first of the month. Um, and less than E date. E date uh, takes the month, takes the date further. And by doing this way, it's one month. See, it takes it by one month in, in the future. So basically, it's uh, for the entire month. So it's greater than, greater equal, and less than the next day, the next month's first day. So that gives me the uh, sum ifs for all types of activities. Okay, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this content. If you did, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment if you want, and I'll see you next time. Take care.